Okay, Alexander, we have got more protests this mm. time in Bulgaria. Mm. And let me take you to pro-EU site, Euronews, mm. Mm. and let's see how they're covering the protests in Bulgaria. Mm. Things are really, I don't want to say spiraling out of control, but things are heating up. And this is mm. the uh, title from Euronews. It says, Bulgaria protests, PM Borisov pouring oil in the fire mm. with plans to change constitution. Mm. And a title out of Euroactive says this, Bulgaria ruling party defiant as protests turn violent. Mm. So um, once again, you have constitutional changes which are being proposed and you have the people getting out onto the streets and mm. uh, protests that start out from what I from what I gathered in my research start out it started out as peaceful mm. spiraled into some heavy violence actually in uh, the mm. capital of Sofia so Alexander what's going on with this story yeah. in Bulgaria I mean this is the thing first to understand is that Borisov who's the prime minister of Bulgaria who is a very pro EU politician he's aligned Bulgaria very closely with the EU with the west with the atlanticist bloc with NATO obviously um, Bulgaria is both a member of NATO and of the EU and has taken a very strong uh, pro line pro EU pro NATO line um, contra against Russia which traditionally has been Bulgaria's close friend they're both Slav nations they're both Orthodox nations Bulgaria was liberated from the Ottomans by the Russians there's a long deep legacy of strong connections between Bulgaria and Russia. And by the way, Bulgarian and Russian, they can understand each other. They're two Slav languages, and there's a certain degree of you know mutual understanding in linguistically. Anyway, he's taken he's been in power since 2009. Um, it's widely accepted and I think acknowledged that it's becoming increasing this 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 government that he has has become increasingly corrupt. In fact, corruption has become almost out of control in Bulgaria now. He's also been clamping down heavily on the opposition media and, um, you know, even pro-Western, you know, the various Western uh, um, agencies that measure press freedom, which invariably give, you know, a, 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 pa a, you know, a pass to pro-Western countries that go against press freedom. They acknowledge that press freedom has been retracting in Bulgaria for some time. Um, anyway, he's been in power for a long time. He's corrupt. He's pro-Western. Many Bulgarians don't like it. The economy isn't good. Bulgaria is the poorest country in the EU. It's the second poorest country now in Europe, I believe. Um, 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 Ukraine is the poorest. I believe Albania is pretty much also at that sort of level. So it, 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 all the factors are there for protests to start to take off. Now, what has happened, what has triggered all of these protests is that there's, there's been three things. Firstly, he's been in confrontation with the president of Bulgaria, who's a man called Radnev, who comes from a different party and who's an independent. And, um, you know, Borisov and Radnev are don't like don't get on with each other and Borisov has been you know trying to sort of harass Radnev through his control of the security forces the second is um there was a sort of revelation of the kind of individual that Borisov is because a video appeared of Borisov in his bedroom with you know guns and piles of euro notes <laughs> there which just you know emphasize the sort of rather baroque nature of the kind of individual he is but then of course there is this problem of the constitutional changes which quite rightly most people in bulgaria see not as a constitutional change undertaken in good faith but as a device to entrench borisov and his party in power and to keep them in power indefinitely. So protests began. Bulgaria has a history of protests. There's, there was a time, I remember about 15 years ago, when the parliament was stormed and burned to the ground. But you know, it's been, it, it hasn't happened for a while, but the protests have built up. Um, and of course, Borisov has resisted these protests and the police have been called out and there's been fighting with the protesters. And as you said correctly, the protests have escalated 
and they are now starting to evolve into a real challenge to his regime. Now, some of our viewers will perhaps note that, you know, there's protests in Belarus, which we've been covering, very different country, um, but some similarities. The media in the West has covered the protests in Belarus massively. Uh, they have almost entirely ignored the protests in Bulgaria because Bulgaria is a very pro-Western country, as we have said. In fact, as I understand it, the protests in Bulgaria are much bigger and more violent than the ones in Belarus, and they are a much more uh, potent challenge to the government there. Now, Borisov is a wily character. He's obviously somebody who clings on and he's got the Americans and the Europeans behind him. We will see whether that is enough to pull him through. But at the moment, he's facing what looks like a really big challenge to his authority. Yeah, he's also like Putin. He's like a, a black belt, the judo black belt, I think. Absolutely, actually. absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. He's so, got all of that. I mean, he, he, yeah. he, he projects this macho image. But of course, unlike, I mean, Putin is that. I mean, Putin is a tremendous judo player and all these things but he's also a highly erudite man speaks very good russian it's very well informed on russian literature but isaf isn't like that at all i mean he's a much he's a much cruder character if i could just say this but he is a fighter he is tenacious he will cling on he won't just walk away of that i'm absolutely sure yeah, he's got the EU at his back in this case. Like you said, with Belarus, it's interesting that the EU wanted the regime change, so they came out hard against Lukashenko. In this case, they support Borisov. So no one's really talking about this. No, actually, Alexander, I'm, I'm reading here. Actually, let me read mm. you the first paragraph from Euroactive. Mm. Bulgaria's ruling Conservative Party on Thursday, 3rd of September, resisted calls for Prime Minister Boyko Borisov's government to resign. Mm. After two months two months of protests mm. against his perceived tolerance of corruption erupted into the most violent day yet. Mm. Two months, Alexander, this has been going on, mm. and it's completely under the radar. Absolutely. It's completely under the radar. So, you know, we, had, we, had, uh, we have this contrast with Belarus, where, by the way, it looks increasingly as if our analysis that the protest movement there is ebbing is true, is correct. I sent Alex earlier today, the, the day that we're doing this video, uh, uh, an article from the Financial Times. We sort of conceded that. But, uh, you know, nonetheless, the protests in Belarus have had massive coverage. And, you know, perhaps rightly so. I mean, you know, protests should be reported. Well, this is something that we have, we, we always say, but, you know, you report protests in Belarus, you should report them also when they happen in Bulgaria, and you should report them also when they happen in France with the yellow vests. What actually happens is they report them when they happen in Belarus. They don't report them when they happen in Bulgaria, even though they're much bigger, much more violent, have been going on for two months and are a real challenge to the government there. And of course, the yellow vests, well, we don't talk about them at all. So that's the difference. That's a, that is an important contrast, and it tells you a great deal about the modern world. Yeah, I wonder if Borisov is going to write it out. I was looking at his party. It looks like his party is kind of aligned. They're conser at least they're they they're listed as like a conservative right. Yeah, so I, like I, I would with <laughs> CDU. Is that like where? They're yeah, that's aligned? right. That's right. I mean, the the if I may say so, I wouldn't call them conservatives. I would call them Merkelians. <laughs> very I'll much say what, yeah, how they're. I mean the. I mean the opposition party, the big opposition party in Bulgaria is called the Socialist Party, which is and by the way, it's it's an outgrowth of the former Bulgarian Communist Party, which ruled Bulgaria during the time of the you know the Soviet domination of Eastern Europe, but both of these parties are not really what they say they are. I mean it's. It, it, it's conservative, Borisov's party is conservative in name only. The Socialist Party is socialist in name only, in my opinion. Um, the different, the real difference is that the Socialist Party has sort of acquired a more nationalist pattern as time has passed. And the and Borisov's party is basically in it for what they can make and what they can get. It's that kind of party. And of course, Merkel likes it.
<laughs> all right. So, all right. We'll leave it there. We are going to follow this story, even though much no of the else. mainstream media yeah, is not. So, Alexander Mercury is editor in chief of the Duran. Thank you very much, guys. If you like this video, click on that red subscribe button to be notified every time we publish a new video and every time we go live as well. Please, please donate to us on PayPal, Patreon, and subscribe star. Your donation helps out our small channel cover stories like this one out of Bulgaria. Please go to the Durant shop, pick up some merchandise, magic mugs, shirts, hoodies, all kinds of good things. And also please go to Patriotic Legacy and pick up a Patriot Beacon 3. They are running a special contest for our viewers. 20% off if you, if you use the code Durant20. When you make a purchase from the Patriot Legacy website, you are entered into the contest to win a purple Patriot Beacon 3 and a Duran USA Magic Mug. I think Alexander has the black Patriot Beacon 3, but that is the Magic Mug that you can be entered to win at the Patriot Patriotic Legacy website. The links are in the description box down below, Alexander. Indeed, and this is the Patriot Beacon 3, but as you rightly said, it's, it's black. This one is black. And the one that's being now offered is, is is purple. But whichever it is, it is the best, unequivocally the best flashlight in the world. It's made by our friends at the Patriotic Legacy. It is an incredible flashlight. It has a wonderful beam. I use it now almost every night. You can see how powerful it is. You can see vast and distances with it. It's picks out detail wonderfully it's a, actually it's a beautiful clear light you can dim it if you need to dim it if you've got lots of people around you or you're in an enclosed space and if you're walking down a dark road and you've got oncoming traffic and you want to alert people to where you are well you can you can flash it like that and that will alert them well to the fact that you are there if you want to alert people otherwise by sound to where you are you've also got an alarm in the handle and it's got other amazing things. Alex calls this the Swiss Army knife of flashlights, and he's exactly right, because it does amazing and tremendous things. Firstly, you get lost, and you don't have a sort of you know GPS or uh, a, a sat-nav or something like that. Well, you've got an actual compass in the handle. And that is, by the way, incredibly useful to me because I love going out walking. I was uh, uh, two weeks ago, I was walking in the Peak District. So it's incredibly useful to have an actual compass. Because sometimes you get out of satellite contact and that's a compass there. It's It doesn't fail you. It's also solar powered. The, the you know the Patriot Beacon is solar powered, so there's no worry or concern that it will run out on you. It's always there when you need it. Um, all you have to do is leave it out in the light, and it recharges. At the same time, if you've got other appliances which you need to recharge, well, you know, like your smartphone or your tablet or even your laptop, well, you've got a port which you can do it with. And then it's got a magnet. So, you know, if you're traveling in your car and you've got a metal place, you can just stick it there. Or I, I have it actually in my cellar and I'm not using it. I can just put it there um, on a metal place and it's just there neatly out of the way, but immediately to hand. And it's also got an ability to act as a tool. So you can use it as a hammer. And also, if you see people in an accident and you have to get them out of their car, well, this works very well as a windscreen breaker. You just tip, you know, the, the, the sides, the, the corners of the windscreen, and it just comes down. And it's also got a seatbelt cutter. So it's just amazing. It's got everything you could possibly need. It is the Swiss Army knife, a flashlight. But it's also a beautiful thing. It's incredibly strong. It's incredibly rugged. It just feels quality. And having such a marvelous, strong, reliable product, it gives you that tremendous confidence that only really good products, really strong, quality products give you. It's the Patriot Beacon 3. It's made by our friends at Patriotic, the Patriotic Legacy in the United States, ships around the world, so it doesn't matter where you are, you can participate in this competition. You need to have one. It's now in purple. 
You must join this competition. And as Alex rightly says, it comes with our Duran mug with the flag of the United States, which may I say, it's, it's a, a, a flag we love, but these are our wonderful mugs, our magic mugs, the best mugs in the world. And I said, I like going on walks. Well, we also now do them in uh, enamel. And these are the perfect mugs to go out on a walking holiday with because they are light and strong and they're perfect for the outdoors. We also have other great things in our shop. By the way, Alex is massively expanding our range of shirts. Um, shirts now come also, as our mugs do, with national flags. And if you wait long enough, you will no doubt find yours. And if you don't, just drop us a line. And we're working all the time to extend the range of our shirts. But I'm sure it will come because, you know, we're, we're busy at it all the time. And we also have amazing hats. We've got truckers hats and baseball hats and embroidered hats. And we've also got the uh, uh, e-books in our shop. So you come to our shop, you support the Duran, you become the owner of great things. And if you join this competition, you get yourself a Patriot Beacon 3 in purple, best flashlight in the world, with one of our magic mugs and the flag of the US. Alex will quickly remind you now how to do those things. You'll find the link to the Patriotic Legacy down below underneath this video in the description box. And you will also find the link to the Duran shop down below in the description box underneath the video. Alexander Burkhurst, thank you very much. Until next time, everybody, take care.